golly, she's really smart. She's really smart. She went over the process and she showed me some things didn't make sense in North Carolina. There's a man named Seth Ketchel. See, this isn't in your thing, so I have to tell you this kind of stuff just real quick. Yeah. Seth K, with a K, Seth Ketchel. He did an analysis of all the elections of all the counties in all the United States of America. Guess where Grant County came up as? There's three categories. Likely cheated, likely didn't cheat, and cheat. What do you think you guys came up as in Grant County? Likely didn't cheat. But the counties surrounding you, some of them did come up as cheating. And some of the things that I've, I've heard and known, you know, I used to work at the bank, so I know a lot of people from both counties. And it's amazing what people will do. I mean, it's just amazing. People are liars sometimes. And, and you just gotta, you just gotta know the elections we're still on. We're gonna get to the bottom of it. And if anybody thinks that it's gonna, let's just get over and go on with it, you got another thing coming. That ain't happening. All over the, all over the country. Most of the people feel like that. I don't care what your media tells you, which I want to talk about later. You need to see rigged. Cyber Symposium, 2,000 mules. True the vote. Go see what they have to say. Listen to them. Open your heart, your mind, your, just be willing to understand and listen. There were anomalies with voting machines, votes, period. Okay, closed voting. They closed voting precincts in the middle of the night, all five states that were really pivotal. They did it at exactly the same time. If anything I'm saying that you don't know, it's because of the type of news you're listening to. Because this stuff's all over the place, it's not hard to find. So none of this stuff has ever been done. We need a forensic audit and canvassing. Canvassing is where they're going to go out and they're going to go door to door and they're going to figure out who's voting. But even if we did that, I believe personally that we need to vote. All right, so what's more than we will return election? Okay, was there enough, was there enough screw ups to overturn the election? Yes, by hundreds of thousands of votes. So that question gets asked me all the time when I say something like that. The virus. Do you know enough about the virus? If God said, hey, you, what do you know about the virus? Do you know enough about the virus? It's changed our lives. I, I got you a book. This one right here. This is how I do things. I give you both sides. This is the one side that will lie to you and tell you horrible, horrible things are going to go on. And... This guy really, actually, so truthfully, he's going to tell you what he would do with his power. You ever heard of Klaus Schwab? People probably heard the name recently. He's not some sort of freak out in the woods around here, you know, typing a manifesto. This guy is the world economic leader in South Klaus Schwab. My husband's reading it cover to cover. I don't read these people very well. So I just skimmed it. But my husband is reading it cover to cover, and he said it's going to shock these people. They're going to be shocked at how this man talks plainly about what he wants to do. So people that tell me i got a conspiracy theory going on, I say, well, this man's telling you what he's going to do. I bet I would take his word for it if I was you. Because what he's talking about is already happened. So, Klaus Schwab, you needed to know about him because he's going to use the virus to do what he wants. He's going to do it, and he's going to connect it to climate change. Just watch and see how he acts. So I'm going to get to climate change in a minute, but one other thing I want you to know, do you know anything about the testing that they did? For COVID. They still do. It's supposed to be done away in December. I talked to people at Tallulah. The whole testing thing is so convoluted and stupid that you have to dumb yourself down to even believe some of this stuff. It's just crazy. It's off the chart. But I got you information from Kerry Mullins, who actually created the PCR test. He died in 2019. He died in 2019. This man knew Fauci, and he knew that there was going to be things going on with this test. He even said, they're going to use our, my test to do things. So just, just saying. And you've got lots of links if you want to go check out what I'm saying. I mean, you could call me a liar, kick in your head, but that'll tell me I know what news you're listening to. You're not hearing the truth. All right. If we're going to talk about vaccines, we're going to have to talk about the FISA, Pfizer and FDA going to court to get their data blocked. Did you guys see that? They went to court to block it for 75 years. And, and by the way, what is the FDA? FDA is messing around with Pharmakia Corporation. FDA is messing around with car, a, a corporation and going to court trying to block data on shots. The vaccines. Why shouldn't you be able to see what's in those documents? It can't be good if they're trying to get rid of it. But guess what? They lost. The judge said they had to release the 55,000 whatever documents, and they've come out. Steve Bannon, another lady, which you're going to hear about in my, my uh, people to listen to, Dr. Um, Naomi Wolf. 
she's, she's, she's looking this over. But Naomi Wolf was a Democrat, a feminazi, Rush would have called her, a feminazi. Her and Steve Bannon have hooked up. And they're going over and, and, and getting with um, you know, doctors and scientists and all these people. A call to action because a lot of documents come out. But guess what? The military documents have already came out on the, on the vaccines. Do you know what they are? Can you look at God and say, I know about these vaccines and I know exactly what it's doing to people's bodies. Do you know what the numbers have done? Gone through the roof with death and, and, and permanent injury? If you don't know, are you okay with, with talking to God about virus? I'm going to shut down a nation. I'm going to do things that are crazy to myself because somebody told me to do it. I'm not going to look at the information and data. The data is out there. If you don't know what the data is, that's not anybody's fault but your own. So you should know that. Okay, I covered that. Climate change. I'm going to really shock you so you guys hold on to your hat. If God didn't know the planet was going to hold up under the, the people that he created, he must be the dumbest God that ever was on the earth. He knew we were going to have cows farting. He's not going to freak out. He knew. He knew there were going to be things going on. Climate change. First it was cooling. Then it was warming. And then it's climate change. Climate changes, doesn't it? So climate change is a money maker. Climate change, uh, vaccines, money maker. Um, health issues, money makers. When you know what a money maker is, you can go to your Bible and you can say, love of money is the root of all evil. People are evil. They're doing things to make money and they're harming us. The reason I want you all to know that, I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Okay? Oh, I do have to say, who is the, like the, the granddaddy of them all about the climate change? You know Gore's predictions have come, come and gone how many times? Al Gore's predictions have come and gone, and none of it ever happened. I mean, sometimes I'm going to laugh in people's faces that talk to me about this. God knows the end from the beginning. The, the land and the earth will survive, and when it's going to burn, it's going to burn because he said so. I don't want to hear any more about that climate change bullcrap. That's going to be hooked up to your virus pretty quick, and they're going to try to do something on you. Be prepared. Be prepared. Okay, now I'm going to get another thing somewhere. Medical. It's probably everybody around. I don't take any meditations. I can, there's natural things I can do for everything. So, what is medications? Pharmaceuticals. The root word of pharmaceutical is pharma. Where do we get the word pharma from? Pharmakia. Go to your, your concordance, look it up. It's in the Bible. It's talked about actually predicting what's going to happen in the end times, which is when I, I never connected it until just recently. So I'm, I'm a little bit shocked. It's in the Bible, what's going on right now. <coughs> Pharmakia, evil concoctions and potions, sorcery. That makes you think about what you're putting in your body when you're doing medication. Because you know God already made stuff that's going to take care of it. I'm doing some stuff right now that shocked the crap out of I, I shocked the crap out of here, but I am so young and alive. I feel younger. I'm looking younger. Things are getting younger. Me. I'm, I'm going against medical. I don't. I don't care what medical says. It's not there to. If, if, if they're giving you drugs, triage, triage. Yes, yes, yes. Emergencies. Yes, yes, yes. But there's doctors everywhere that know what to do, and I can send them to you if you want to help. Power at them. Okay. Oh, 80. No. 95 to 98% of media is white. It's, it's, it's owned and operated what I call Satan's disciples. I just recently understood that Satan has players, that he has pawns, and he has disciples. And people are listening to it. The media is listening to it, or the media is using things like um, virus, like climate change, like medical stuff to control you. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. As a matter of fact, if you want to know the truth, before 2000, when all hell was here, people were telling me this was going to happen. People were going to shut their church down. They're going to shut their homes down. They're going to do all kinds of things. Hey, and I'm like, you're a whack job, man. <laughs> you're crazy. That's not going to go that far. We're not going to fall for this. Well, I, I've learned since then that, yeah, we will fall for this. We'll listen to whatever they tell us because they're going to tell you you're going to die, so you better do it. But you don't have to listen to it. You don't have to do it. Bill Gates, my next person, Bill Gates. I want you to hear Bill Gates himself in his own words tell you how he is going to handle population. My kitten 
pictures come up instead of my video. There it is. Oh, that was so cute. So, I'm going to start it. Oh, it's it won't right. play up there. It's going to play over here. Yeah. Yeah. This is Bill Gates talking.
Be armed and ready, because I'm telling you, if you think you don't got a doggone emergency coming, you are crazy. It's coming. They have to have you. You got two more documents in your stack. That's very important. I mean, there's a pack of documents from the, um, that EO from Bill Tweed. That's a packet. I'm not sure. I think it was nine pages. That right there is this guy building things <coughs> to house people, to take people out of their homes. For a COVID virus, I can get rid of in 15 minutes. Take my word for it. Give me a lie detector test. I, I'm telling you right now, I'll bet you anything you got, I can get rid of COVID in 15 minutes if somebody gives me, give me your symptoms right away, I can come in and take care of it right now. It's not because I know everything, it's because I did it, and I've had so many countless people tell me what they're doing. I just had recently in the last two months, somebody come to me and say, hey, hey, you told me don't let nobody die of COVID in my family. I got an 80 year old with problems. He's going down fast, he had to go to bed. He had to go to bed. Man, you know, my heart rate's going up. I'm like, oh my God, he's already in bed? Geez, so Friday, how long has this been? It just happened that fast. It really just went quickly. I mean, because he's old, I don't know. She said, you got what I need? I keep it on hand. She keeps it on hand. You'd be surprised at the people that keep horse paste on hand for COVID. <laughs> you'd be surprised. I could name names right out of my mouth right now. You'd fall over with shock. Let me tell you what happened to this guy. She come and got it. She left. I, I'm, I'm telling her dosing is on the thing. I mean, this, it tells you it's by weight. So take it down a little. You know, I just kind of gave her some advice of what I did. Basically, every single thing I did, I told her to do. So you know I couldn't wait for her to call me the next day, right? This guy's going down that fast. I mean, you just don't know. I was thinking, oh, God, I hope everything goes well, Lord. I hope everything goes well, because uh, he's 80. She calls me the next day and said, man, I've been sweating. And he said, I'm sweating all night. Man, I feel good, though, this morning. Horse paste. Don't tell me it don't work. It's a mammal. If a mammal can take it, a horse has a sensitive system, if it doesn't die from it, you ain't dying from it. You could overdose on it and you won't die from it. But doggone it, it'll take care of COVID. So maybe somebody needed to hear that because you might be turning into, or you know, coming up on a, a situation where you're gonna have to, oh my God, I might have to go get it because that's what happened to me. Okay, so I, I told you about the, the Bill Leo, you know, we don't need to build camps to take people out of the home. We know how to get rid of COVID. We don't have to have grandma die in the place, do we? No, well, we shouldn't have to. But here's your kicker. Take your EO and match it up with the CDC documents that I gave you. That in there tells you that they're going to be able to do things with a phone call. It's coming, folks. This man ain't no dummy. He's richer than rich. You don't know the whole entire world economic form is richer than richer than rich than you can imagine. These people got power and money, and they got Bill Gates and Fauci's and all kinds of people all over. Trudeau went to this guy's teachings on how to become a dictator and take over a nation. This guy's crazier than half man. And there he is, talking about Bill Gates. You've got to fix this virus, man. You've got to be ready for this virus. Well, I can get rid of it in 15 minutes. They lied. So you know that. They know that for a fact. From now on, you know for a fact. I wouldn't lie to you. I would never hurt you. I would never lie to you or hurt you. Your other book. Okay. I was mad at Glenn Beck for a while because you know he didn't back Trump. And I wanted to kick his cotton pick and you know what. But there's nobody, nobody on the planet that can do a chalkboard teaching like Glenn Beck. And, of course, his book is going to be, it's kind of, to me, he's always looking at the worst of things. I know God is preparing us to take, we're going to, we're going to win. We're going to win. But you need to know the truth. You can't win if you don't know the truth because the lies are not there. Glenn Beck. That's why I gave you that book there. All right. So why is my book there? Well, I wasn't going to do that because I felt sad. I said, I don't want to be a promoter of my own thing here. That's not why I'm here. But I felt the Holy Spirit kind of telling me, hey, you're going to talk about your two camps. A lot of evil things you're going to talk about. Well, the two camps I told you last time I was here, if you remember, that you guys, you did? Thanks. Two camps. There's only two forces you're working with, good and evil. Good and evil. You can, you, you can identify who you're with, and then you can make better decisions. This works for me on everything. I, I apply my two camps concept to every single thing, just like I did all this stuff. Somebody starts talking, 2000, somebody's talking, I already had this book written by then. I've already been through hell. When you read my book, or if you read my book, you're going to see I've already been to hell. So, crap, 
man. These people are talking about dying. Hey, d dying is gain, according to Paul. Apostle Paul says, dying is gain. Let's die, man. But actually, I know you're lying. Because I've been through this before. Final word. Fauci was around in the AIDS crisis. Fauci was around. I never knew that name. you got to know I knew what happened in the AIDS crisis. Fauci was around in the AIDS crisis. You know what he did? Killed. He what? Killed. Oh, definitely. He told, he told them not to take certain drugs and to take certain drugs, just like he did this time. And guess what they died of? AIDS pneumonia. COVID pneumonia. AIDS pneumonia. I mean, Fauci, man, he gives you what you need to die. we we got to stop this. we got to know what we're doing. And let me tell you, it's the bottom up that's going to win this. We're not going to touch the top, obviously. They're so corrupt. I mean, like, Sue go through that analysis on the voting. But I swear, I'm going to do a chat on that. So what I didn't put on your thing again, because I kind of feel weird promoting myself, but I have a channel, rumble.com, rumble.com, rumble.com. I want to say it over and over, rumble.com. You, you don't have to sign up. You just go there, rumble.com. You go in and you click on channel. You put D. Hank Dentral in there, and that will come my videos. I'm going to do a video about what my sister did. Just a simple analysis of a person that just said, this is not add nothing. It's so brilliant, it's absolutely beyond belief that we all can think of it. I mean, geez, we should have all thought. I'm going to tell you more about what's going on with those Pfizer documents. I'm going to talk to you about school board things. Do you know the books? I'm going to be vulgar, so everybody just get ready. The books that I've seen that they have on the fourth graders and above, I think it's fourth graders and above, they had boys on there. It's like a cartoon. And they're showing these two boys with full-on erections and then they show them in a bed and one getting kind of freaked out by the other one pumping. This isn't in a fourth grade. Man, I'll work somebody's head off for that stuff. That's ridiculous. Who would put that in there? And not our school board. Don't get me wrong. I don't think our school board's evil. I just don't think that they're prepared for what's coming. I want y'all to be, pre be prepared. I just come in here and prepare you. Be prepared. Something bad's coming. You're going to try to do stuff. And you know what? It's a no. I have to take these books to the sheriff, and I have to take these books to the mayor. What's of note is I'm not told to take the books to the, to the school board. I don't understand that, but I follow, I follow what I believe God told me to do. So there it is. These are the books you're supposed to hear. There's something in it for you. If you get with God, he'll show, it what it, show you what your part is. All right. And the DPI right now is working on the sex education standards. Carolina. Yeah, and people could be. Well, yeah, I would assume you're the Mrs. knows all about this. The Mrs. This does. is not good, and they've got a full blown whack job running this show. These it's people are evil, and it's not that they're, they didn't mean to be. They have grown up because we didn't mean that. Doggone Christians didn't do a doggone thing to stop this evil from taking over our schools. I'm, I'm just disgusted with Christians, and I mean, I can't even really blame the world. I don't know, you don't know how to blame the world because they don't know any better. The Holy Spirit's inside of us. He leads us and guides us into all truth. Good and evil is easy to spot when you break it down to e evil. Is this evil? People are dying. People are lying. You're having to die. You're having to die. Very sick and will be sick for the rest of their lives. Taking their drugs, taking their medication, <coughs> having their tests, going to the hospital, repetitive. Yeah, well, I'm going through it right now. I had to wear a mask. Power, power, power. It's crazy what's going and on. It, it starts right here. In little counties, just like and this. And I believe you all. across the country. I believe you all can. And our, the school board will not allow us to speak to them in this manner. And they will not respond. They tell us they'll give, respond to us in 30 days. They do nothing. I have some responses from them. But it's basically, it's basically taken out of the CDC. And, and, and our health care people here in this county need to get a check. Yes. Well, our yeah, it is. Anyway, we were here to talk to you guys. We'll take it up with them over there if we need to, if God says so. So, okay, so that's my spiel, and I hope that um, all of y'all have a good night, and God bless y'all. And we're praying for you all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you want more information? Contact me. I just, I just touched it. Oh, I got some good stuff. I'll put it on my channel. All right, we can't say it. Sorry.
this time of night, I'm pour out. I've been going for an hour. So thank you guys. Have a great night.
special meeting of May the 2nd and May the 20th, and a continued meeting for May the 27th. Do I hear a motion? Motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Now we will be closing the regular meeting to open a public hearing. So I will make a motion to close the regular meeting, please. Motion. Thank you. <coughs> second, please. Sure. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. We are now open for public hearing uh, concerning the 2022 23 budget. All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Glad everybody's here. To join us tonight. Um, as everybody's known, if you've been a part of some of the budget workshops that we've been involved in, this has been a, a test of the year, trying of the year. And I think it all goes back to a lot of things that's already been said. A lot of challenges out there today in the supply field. Um, inflation is hitting hard, and uh, materials and supplies are hard getting hard to get. So it was a challenge. I want to I wanna absolutely appreciate the board for their patients and working with us in the budget workshops and uh, I want to also just completely put out an extreme shout out to Miss Becky, our CFO. Uh, she spent a lot of hard hours and a lot of hard work on this budget and her team. So I can't thank you enough for the time and effort you put in. So thank you very much. Um, good over all right, so I do want to thank the board for their uh, forbearance and perseverance through this very particularly challenging budget. Um, I'm going to go through the budget ordinance, um, but I've got a lot of comments to make as explanation. I think I've handed these um, highlights out to our audience as well as our board. Um, one thing that I wanted to outline was the major priorities that the board addressed as they were um, working through this process this year. Obviously, the first thing on the table was the recognition of the negative impacts to our citizens and also to our employees of this um, ridiculous inflation that we're experiencing. And um, for our employees, um, the board felt it was a priority to ensure that no employee makes less than $29,120 per year, which is equivalent to $14 an hour. Um, in that vein, um, there was other work that was done to ensure equity across the board with other county employees. Uh, our board outlined a, a priority last year to continue to provide and enhance positive recreational opportunities for our youth by prioritizing repairs to the community pool, number one, and also to add to the recreation contingency fund, which is about $62,500 per year. Um, the board also recognized the um, impacts of um, our changing world where public safety is concerned. And so they recognized the need to revamp the public safety salary plans. So they worked very closely with um, our public safety personnel to come up with a salary plan that was fair for our sheriff's deputies, our jail detention officers, our 911 communication staff, and of course, we made some changes to the EMS uh, pay plan mid-year last year. Um, we also recognized the financial difficulties that were presented by unfunded mandates to our school system and provide additional funding uh, to the schools of $263,000 for a total of $1,263,000 in current expense. And this represented um, projections provided by the school finance officer of seven and a half percent cumulative increases since the county changed um, the allocation from 570 or 570,000 to a million dollars several years ago. And then we also recommended that the board consider increasing that current expense allocation by seven and a half percent for the next several years in a good faith effort to help the school system meet the unfunded uh, mandates and the health bill their fund balance over time. 
So these were, um, there was a lot of discussion over these priorities, and so we, we hope that we have uh, been able to address them in our budget. If you want to flip into your um, ordinance, you can go back about four pages, page, the fifth page. Click four pages over. You'll see the total budget. Um, our general fund budget obviously is our largest uh, fund, but we do have several special revenue funds that we have to budget for. And so we came in with a general fund budget of $21,586,224, which represents 94% of the total county budget. Um, this is quite an increase over the 21-22 budget, and I'm going to go over the reasons why here in just a moment. The major changes that have increased this budget are um, pay rate increases to our pay plans for our public safety personnel, increase to our school funding, as I noted before, increases in employee benefits costs, which I'll explain here in just a moment, Increases in the cost of doing garbage through our sanitation department, through fuel and dump fees increases, and the needed replacement of an excavator, which was approved this budget year, but will not be um, delivered until fiscal 2023. And the addition of one ambulance to the um, EMS budget, typically we budget for one ambulance per year, this coming up through two, which is a strong change this year. The good news for the taxpayers is the mill rate will stay at 65 cents. So the board was very diligent to make sure that we did not put any um, additional um, burden on our taxpayers in these difficult financial times. Um, we had, as I noted above, we had a 17.7% increase in our health insurance costs. That was a huge increase to our budget. But the board feels that it's a, a huge priority to ensure that all of our employees have health care and that they're covered. Um, we all know about the double digit increases in our fuel costs, and we burn a lot of fuel in the course of a, a month with EMS, uh, sheriff, transit, and sanitation. Those are our biggest fuel um, usage departments. We estimate that our solid waste fees are going to be at 40, uh, an increase of 47%. However, we are working and negotiating with another landfill, have, hoping that that cost will, will uh, decrease. So uh, that will help my feelings, especially because most of the increase I'm having to take out of fund balance this year. Retirement rates have increased about 9% for the third or fourth year in a row, and it's anticipated that that increase will continue over time. And of course, we know what inflation is doing when we go to the grocery store. Well, it's the same inflation we're dealing with when we have to purchase supplies and, and other things um, that are critical to the operation of the uh, county. Um, the increases in these total costs as I've noted, forced a hard examination of our budgets to reduce expenditures where feasible while maintaining our ability of our departments to continue to provide services to the citizens. We looked at where we could find additional revenue and we are projecting that um, sales tax revenue will increase 3.5% this coming year as projected by the North Carolina Labor Municipalities. And so that being said, we came into our budget workshops with a $2.1 million deficit, and we were able to trim that deficit to where I'm having to appropriate fund balance in the amount of $561,000. That's equivalent to about 5.45 cents on the mill rate. Um, if you flip to the next page, you will see the breakdown of our revenues, whereas um, in, in our general fund, and you'll see it obviously that the largest portion of our revenue comes from the property tax at 31.47%. However, this time last year, the budget, we, we um, property tax was going to take up 36%. So as you can see, we're really trying to hold the line on how, number one, how we collect our taxes to make sure everyone's paying, but also to keep that tax rate um, steady. 
Our shared revenues um, were, are projected to be 22%. Our sales tax is projected to be 15%. In this budget year we're ending, we um, had budgeted for sales tax to take up 17% <coughs> and shared revenues to take up 23%. So we have some changes in how, not so much the mix, but how, um, how the money's flowing in. Obviously, um, aside from our American Rescue Act, um, allocation which is not reflected in this budget. Um, we are seeing a decrease in the shared revenue streams we're getting because the CARES Act money is drying up and the other incentives are drying up. If you'll turn to the next page you'll see the breakdown of our expenditures by function. Um, we budget by department level and then each department has a fits into one of these functions. You'll see that, um, as you can see in our, uh, this, this function reflects the priorities of the board. Public safety has the largest percent of our budget. Um, that budget last year, or this year we're closing out, was comprising 32% of our budget. This year it's 36% of our budget, so you can see that the board is really, truly making a lot of investments in our public safety. Um, how did we get from $2.1 million deficit to half a million? Well, we did a lot. I, I said this year I had to use a scalpel. First I had to use a machete and then I had to use a scalpel. scalpel. Um, but some of the things that we cut um, we're making sure that the only capital outlay in the budget um, that's reflected is capital outlay that the board has already approved this budget year and will be expanded next year. Aside from that extra ambulance, we have been budgeting about $100,000 a year in um, repairs to our building. However, buildings, I should say, we've got a lot of buildings. However, over the past several years, We've been able to get a lot of things fixed, so we trimmed that budget down to where um, only major repairs and um, emergency spending only for, for repairs. Um, I cut the IT capital outlay by 50% to fund only critical IT infrastructure needs to maintain our network uh, integrity. Basically what we're going to do is we hope to spend about 220000 um, to upgrade our IT equipment and we'll spread it over 23 and 24. Um, and as I mentioned, we have um, the two ambulances. In addition, as I said, the board took a hard look at our wage rates and um, did not approve a cost of living adjustment, but did look at um, making sure people who are making less than $14 an hour are at 14 and also looking at the ambulance. Um, we also set a fund balance policy to ensure that our fund balance does not get built away or cut away um, in any future budget year. So at this point for the 2021 uh, year, we closed that year at 47% of our total expenditures fund balance. Um, we said we'll go no less than 35%, and that is in line with local government commission recommendations. Um, we also explored looking at our sanitation model and looking at how we can continue to cut our total cost by being more efficient. Seeking grants, um, I have to commend several <coughs> departments, the Sheriff's Department being one of those departments. They have gotten many grants this past year. And the grant money is still flowing quite well, so um, all of the departments are being charged to put the grants wherever they can. And then we look at our budget every month in our regular meeting. However, we'll do an intensive mid-year budget review um, just to see how our budget is doing against how our economy is doing. So, um, you will note um, that I have, or we have, laid out each each section, and I'll let you look at it, look at those items um, on your own time. But I will highlight a few things um, in our general fund budget. Um, you'll note that um, 
if you, if you take last year's budget and set it next to this year's budget, you'll see that some departments we did do some increases on. Two of the departments we put some increase in staff in. That would be our administration department and finance. So I don't want anybody thinking Becky's giving herself a big raise because she hasn't. Um, we are looking um, at succession planning in our administration. There are five or six of us, of which four out of five or six of us will be retiring out. I'll be retiring in five years, 11 months, and 19 days. <laughs> um, so we have to ensure that um, we maintain the integrity of these departments, and so our goal is to bring in additional, one, one additional staff on the administrative side, one additional staff in the finance side, so that we can begin bringing these people up so that they'll be ready to take the reins in the five years later and some few days. Um, we also will note, um, like I've said, the um, sheriff jail, ambulance, communications, um, departments. If you laid last year's next to this year's, you'll see those are increased due to those pay plan changes. And we also added a $50,000 line item because we've got fire trucks that are 35 or 40 years old, am I correct? So we know that our volunteer fire departments are gonna to need to be able to replace those trucks at some point. And so the county is looking at squirreling money back toward down payments or what have you to help with those expenditures. Um, human services, if you turn the page, you'll see that those budgets are, are decreased over last year. But again, as I was mentioning, those pots of money that have boosted those budgets up during the COVID round are beginning to dwindle away. Um, this county's been very blessed to get a lot of help for utilities assistance for our, our folks um, to help our foster parents um, to take care of the children that they're taking care of and to help our disabled population to be able to meet their monthly expenses. So, so it, and, you know, unfortunately, fortunately COVID's beginning to wane or it's not as deadly. It'll always be with us. However, we're seeing those pots of money dry up. You'll notice <coughs> that under um, cultural and recreation, you'll see what happened to the swimming pool budget. There is the refurbishment of our swimming pool. Uh, we budgeted $150,000 to, to rework that pool for our, for our folks. Um, and then the next page, you'll see the increase to the school's current expense. We are guaranteed for another year to get SRS timber money, so I went ahead and budgeted for that. Um, and then um, we, we paid off the QZAD note on the elementary school um, this past year. Um, this coming year, 22-23, we will pay off the high school. You'll see the debt service for that. And then we'll wrap in the debt service we just put in place um, last week for the middle school. Um, this is all funded with sales tax money. So this will not um, be taken from um, the property tax rate. And then you'll notice we've made um, several contributions to our nonprofits to recognize the good work that they do here in the county and, and as, as our right hand. We will be making transfers uh, to a revaluation fund of 85,000. Uh, we'll be um, putting money um, into our capital projects fund. We'll be spending the uh, match money for the middle school. And then as I noted, we put our reserve for recreation expansion as well in this budget. Another budget, um, the budgets that we have to deal with are special revenues. You'll see the emergency telephone system. This is our 911 account. Uh, it's very restricted as to what we can spend it for, but it's mainly um, to pay our, tel our phone bills, separate communications, and then to increase um, infrastructure and support. So that budget will come in at 317,451. We'll be getting from the state a little over $64,000. We have plenty of fund balance there we need to appropriate because if you don't spend it, they take it away. So um, Misty Henry does a real good job on her capital planning and so she's got several things she's gonna be looking at. The rebound fund, 
And we'll be transferring $85,000 into that, that fund and then going to <coughs> close out our revalue because we're going to be having um, a new revalue, I think, that's coming for a year. Um, our economic development fund, we budget every year um, $12,000, and that's funded by rent payments on our PAW, our point of presence, which is right across the road there. We get rents from Boston West in the tribe. The National Opioid Settlement, this is the special revenue fund that's new. And we may change how we account for this. Um, I was talking to the local government commission the other day, and they may recommend we do a project for me. I've got some questions for them. We will be getting, uh, we just got $45,399 the other day, which I got in fund balance. We're not making any expenditures at this point. And then this coming budget year, we'll get 178861 from the national settlement. And these payments will taper off, but they will occur over a period of 18 years. Then two new funds that are required of the DASB 84 is our fines and forfeiture funds. This is where we pull in penalties for property taxes and different penalties that people pay. Um, and that money um, under, the, under the statute and under um, GASB 84 has to go to the Board of Education, so there will be a, an extra little pot of money that they get. And then we had to pick up our deed of trust and representative payment um, funds. These are funds that we hold for our citizens who, um, for whatever reason, are under guardianship or and they're on Social Security and the county holds those funds in trust and spends those funds for the benefit of those parties. And then our Register of Deeds collects funds off of Deeds of Trust. She holds those and then we remit those uh, to the state of North Carolina. And then the last page you'll see um, just a revisiting of the American Rescue Plan Act. This is for MMO purposes only. This is under a project ordinance. We did get our second tranche of funding the other day in the amount of $819,782, and we had $82,118 left over. So the board um, looked at some broad priorities on how they would like to see this money um, uh, distributed out, um, looking at um, inequities in our community, looking to see how we can best use it to, to help our citizens. And with that being said, um, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Marino for public comment. Outstanding. Thank you. Very good. I'd like to open it the floor up to see if we have any public comment on the budget as proposed. What we're saying. session for just a moment we won't be for just a moment there was a personnel issue that had to be um, take precedent before this afternoon
those of you that may or may not know, uh, Chair, Chair, uh, Madam Chair, or has really worked hard in several different programs and uh, as a part of boards throughout not only our county but throughout the state. And she's a voting member of the Via Health. And so they've, uh, they've honored her with this, and, and I'm proud to be the one to be able to give this to her. It says, Via Health presented to the county or board member, advocate, and friend, in grateful recognition of your service for individuals with behavioral health and intellectual and developmental disability needs. Thank you for your exemplary leadership and support. Thank you. CDBG grants, there, we have seen some movement. Uh, we're actually working through the, I, I not only hope, but it better be the final round of procurement for some of these uh, projects that we've worked on. This has been, um, it's been tough to say the least on getting responses and getting contractors to get involved, uh, honestly. We will meet, if not this week, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. See, Ms. Michelle knows it's, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, we'll meet either this week. I know we're finalizing some some um, budget stuff this week. We'll either meet this week or next week. We have some uh, some proposals to look over. Uh, is that correct, Ms. Gordon? Um, yeah. So yes. we'll have a little committee to get together and look at those over. It won't be April 15th. April 15th. <laughs> uh, that's a different date. I, I left a lot of this is just chronological dates to keep, kind of, so we can kind of reference back. Next thing was, I know the board was probably aware, the uh, Joyce Kilmer Memorial Forest Annual Hill Climb. We just signed a letter. The uh, Central Carolina's Region Sports Car Club of America Board of Directors will be conducting their annual Dragon Hill Climb event on uh, July 30th and 31st this year. So we'll be sure and let that yeah. I've got a question about that. Where is that? Do you know where Joyce Gilbert is? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Just keep going. Straight up the road past Joyce Gilbert. Road to nowhere. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Is it a, is it a uh, time grace? Yes. Yeah. 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 Start at a different time. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets up there in the back. One car at a time. Yeah. It's different classes. Different classes of cars, different types of cars. It's interesting. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. definitely worth a watch. Lynn, you won't get in. I think I must say it all. <laughs> yeah, some of them. People do. Yeah. You wouldn't get a ride home in a tow truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You wouldn't get a ride in the <laughs> But they have a great time. Mm -hmm. Even going in. I'll come out and watch from a distance. 
cool. Uh, moving on to the next item, the Advent Health. I know um, the interest that the, the board has shown on supporting any kind of medical facility, although it's not too terribly close, we may end up using that. We utilize different facilities all the time. So uh, we did provide a sign letter in time their application for certificate of need to build a new 67 bed acute hospital in the Inca Canley area of Buckingham County has been submitted. So we'll wait to hear about that. Yeah. Being that that end of Buckingham County is, I guess, a little bit closer than Michigan for Grant County. Next item, uh, we're moving forward trying to get this, the well scheduled for a monitoring well up at the closed landfill. Um, Chair, uh, Commissioner Eller did sign the permit for uh, a four service. I've just signed the application to North Carolina DEQ just to, to get permission to, to actually install a well on four service property from the state. It's a state, it's federal approval, now state approval. We look for that turnaround about two weeks and then scheduling the to do the well, let's say mid to late summer. And I'll report more on that as we get forward to getting those wells installed. Then the last item um, from the June 2nd, or no, it was third, budget meeting, uh, I was requested to set up a uh, meeting with the school superintendent, the board, board commissioners, with our state legislators. So I sent an email out that, that June 3rd. And I've been working with uh, Representative Gillespie's legislative assistant, Andrew Bailey, who indicated their availability is limited while we were in session. Presumably, they will have more availability in July, in July if a short session has adjourned by that time. And I'll continue to coordinate for a potential meeting in July, as early as July, to late uh, July as possible. So I'll stay on top of that. There are no questions. Dr. Uh, manager's report comments. I'll move. You should have uh, three documents for the project manager's report. Uh, I'll begin going down that. RDA, um, Boost Branch Subdivision, no movement. Um, I'm showing it at 95%. Right now, the contractor, DR, is having a problem with their guardrail company. And right now, there is no definitive date on when they're going to come to install that guardrail. Uh, our advocate, who's uh, McGill, we all know McGill, has actually made it clear that that's unacceptable. And I sent another email to both the contractor and McGill representing RDA that the board, the RDA board, is important working right now in trying to get the listed property. And we really need those deeds and those plats and the project finished. So they need to work on a better uh, in state in eight weeks from now. I'll continue to monitor that. Um, and that's just a little bit of a hiccup in that part of the RDA. Can you work with the investigation on this? And I have to pay back a, a loan. So I, I made them, I, I let them aware of that too. We, got, we need to get some money back so we can pay for that loan. So, so I'll continue to monitor that and work that condition. Uh, Status on the two metal buildings. There's no, there's been no construction. However, I met this week with um, completing the utilities. Um, both buildings need dressed up around the outside. Obviously, they need seating and grading. There's a structure needs to be put in at the rec building, uh, the Parks and Recreation building. But I want to, to me, instead of doing it twice, I want to go ahead and dig utility connections so that we're we're not digging through what we've already replaced. So we're going to start working on getting at least the, the connections as far out away from the building so we can dress up the site, complete all that, get the stacked metal and the wood out of the way. We've already started planning to do that. I'm expecting some numbers from, um, I, I, wanted, I was wanting them today to provide to the board, but I didn't get them for the completion numbers for both buildings. So as soon as I get that, I'll present to the board and we'll move forward with those, try to get those completed. Uh, as you are probably aware, the Board of Elections, they have moved in. Um, we have very pleased customers. I'm showing it at 99.7 complete only because there is, I got a quote for a price of the sign, external sign. I wasn't really happy with the cost of that. So I'm going to try to shop and see if I can get that cost down. 
And then there's a, a lock that needs for the bypass window on the inside. It's the only couple of little items, little punch list items that are done. The facility is really, really nice. Um, and I'm proud of what we've all done in that facility. I urge you to take a look at that as soon as possible when we have a chance to do that. We are moving towards phase two of that project, which is to, as you can see, we've made uh, preparations for the demolitions to start in the women's bathroom. Uh, there is, I stopped that just briefly to, I want to get a different lock for the, what will be, which is actually the, the, the women's bathroom now, to, so that we don't have any problems. And then we'll start working with the, probably the jail crew to help us do the demolition. And we'll move forward that hopefully this week as well, if not starting next week. Next project is the, the Grand County Justice Center project. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of things that we've got on that. And I've been in contact with some, um, it really needs to be a CMAR or construction manager or risk firm that we get uh, packets from. So um, I've been in contact with um, SLAM, uh, Mosley, and also LSDP, and I'll be in contact with a few others. Right now, we're setting the date to have the committee to, to or have proposals submitted by August the second. And of course, we'll have a committee put together to look at those. We've already got several names. Commissioner Nelms will be a part of that. Uh, but I'll show you what in preparation for that. This is probably a twofold. I'm going to show you the. the it's a chance for us to see a little bit of our website, but also the yard. Uh, here on the screen, as you can see, is the the RFQ go out with the contractors and what they'll be able to see and I shouldn't say it's, it's not contractors it's really a design team for us to handle it pretty much for all of us. As you stroll through the first couple of pages this is where we help we hope they'll be able to access the program if you remember we had a, a hearing that they they became slammed to our program and then this RFQ will be accessible it's a link that you'll be able to um, goes right to our site and you get to see my ugly mug and then right over here you'll be able to click on the Grand County New Justice Center you'll be able to click on the program and you'll be able to each one of our um, interested design teams will want to see this to see what idea that we we're trying to base our construction of our facility on obviously during our design we will do something a little different than the exterior of this it just happens to be the design it has the whole it has the whole design team and of course the other the other one would just be the same thing to show you it's basically our team. so it's available also wanted to be able to show you a little bit about while we're here our side i think it's a it's an outstanding uh, new addition to our you, you can go through here and see uh, the different board of commissioners but i love the different tabs to be able to click on whatever you may have really really user friendly register of deeds goes right to, and I can click on any one you want to see. We also made uh, the Justice Center available too. When you go to the home page, you close it, you can click directly to, the, to that site to be able to pick up those same documents. Um, we're advertising for, I can't even say the word, sesquicentennial, I think is what it's called. That is on here as well planning for them has some really great views of our beautiful county um, and again each department is listed you have your different departments and I can click on any one that, that you want ADM A to Z or excuse me M to Z So I think um, Abraham has done a great job on putting this together. It's going to be a useful tool for everything that we're having to do with local government, but also through the process of our digestive system. I just wanted to provide that update. There's no questions. Moving on to item six, which is the sixth 
grade middle school edition. I got a phone call from Miss Tanya Wash asking and inviting the board. Um, she'll set up a time when you want to. I'm really encouraging the board to come out and visit. And I would too. I try to go to each monthly meeting over there. If not other times where we meet on the 28th, if we want to take a trip over there, I encourage the board to keep that in mind. They really like for you to come over and see. Really, really going to be a plus for our, our kids. You can see the uh, provider there. It's showing 70. <coughs> providing the status update from that. Right now, they're showing a December of this year completion of that project, uh, which will be great. Um, and we'll, we'll hope we'll hope that they stay on track, considering all that they've been had to go through the agreement. And then last but not least, uh, provided uh, the only bid we for the third bid we did on the 16th of June. We only got one bid from Adams Contracting. I've provided the numbers for that. The total bid was 997362.50, which is way outside the range that we've budgeted for this project. It was originally the base was 285,000, and that was state money. Um, the engineer went ahead with with everything that's going on: inflation, fuel costs, and did a 40 percent. Contingency was about 399 or 400 k is what we were thinking might they might come in around and then obviously um, it's way up above what what they're willing to really look at now. So the plan is um, we're supposed to meet. I'm waiting on uh, Mr. Hinkle to get with me on scheduling a meeting with um, and Adams Contracting was our only bidder and either value engineer or see if there's any movement in their number and. Uh, Commissioner Wiggins, if you would like to be a part of that, that would be great. That's supposed to happen potentially this week. We'll move as forward as we can. We'll see what they'll they'll uh, be willing to do. The state has in the past, when you've had higher money come in for EWP, they will kick in some extra money. Our engineer feels like this is way more than they'd be willing to kick in. So we'll know we'll know a little bit more about what direction we may end up going up at the board's discretion, obviously, once we find out and have that meeting. Um, Continue to press forward. I've been out there, and it, it does, there's a lot of things that need to happen. That so. so I'll continue to press forward, and we'll set up a meeting. And I'll let sure you know. Barring any questions or comments or concerns. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
never as much as what they want us to pay. Um, on page two, you'll see our property tax collections hung in real, real close to the sum last year. We had total real property taxes of $37,222. Last year was $37,229. So I was like, I wonder could you not find $7? <laughs> um, BTS was a help here this um, last year. It was $56,837. Um, last year was $51,751. So that, um, that continues to grow as um, we people are paying more for their automobiles these days. If you turn to page four, you'll see that we have collected um, $7,125,085 in real property taxes and $578,719 in DMV. We are ahead of the sum last year on real, a little shy of $20,000. And DMV were ahead a little over 18, almost 19,000. Our tax collection rate is the highest I've ever seen it. Thank you, taxpayers. For this time of the year, 97.38. Last year we were at 97.91, but they were penny counts. Um, so we're happy to see um, continued progress in our property tax collections. If you will look at page five, before you have your card attack, it's all explainable. We have revenues um, of 973.3. Our expenditures were 2,167,000 um, for a net deficit of 1,194,000. However, I changed the timing and when I cashed out all the special appropriations. We paid the school bond uh, payment, but we also um, I cleaned out all the special appropriations just so we have a clean slate for June as we're uh, closing out the year. And so our special appropriations was a little over 722000 Last year, if you look at it, last year our expenditures were way up in the two millions for the June year. And that's because I, I changed my policy on when I'm going to pay out appropriations. So um, it's, it's all explainable. Um, we're not looking as good in our surplus or deficit as we did this uh, last year. However, again, it's all explainable. If you turn to page six, you'll see that our revenue collections were sixteen million eight sixty six. We spent sixteen million nine fifty nine for a net year to date surplus of ninety three. I'm sorry, deficit of ninety three thousand seven ninety three. But again. I spent down those appropriations earlier, and of course we have all the receivables to pick up after our junior end. We've um, collected a million two more in revenues this year than last. We spent 2.4, of which 700,000, or 773, so those appropriations. And we remember all the capital projects expenditures we've made as well. We've done a lot of good things with the people's money this year. And so I'm just hopeful that we will see, um, our, especially in our recreation area, the new rec building, I think that people are going to be real pleased with that. We'll be able to go and have their children uh, try on their uh, uh, uniforms. I say costumes on a dance mall. Uniforms and actually be a, a nicer atmosphere for our kids to be in. Sales tax, if you look at page 7, Still up from um, this past month and this past year, we collected just the other day 259,694 for our April collections. Um, we are ahead of this time last year by about 218,000. Um, so we've had about a about a nine percent increase. So you can see I was very conservative in my um, budget for sales tax. However. They are anticipating a slowdown, so we don't want to over budget our revenues. We um, also collected a little bit over $26,000 in our quarter cent sales tax, which is not included in this um, first figure. So, overall, since we began collecting the quarter cent, we collected $729.6, and I'm going to have about $140,000 to transfer into that capital management. And then if you look on our collections, you'll just see um, that our tax collection office is continuing to whittle down on these old balances. Just to give you a point of reference, um, 
21-22 uh, tax year, we still have outstanding at 187. This time last year, it was um, for that tax year, that current tax year, it was about 220. So we can see that both our taxpayers are being very diligent in that, how they pay their taxes, and then our collections office is also working very, very hard. One other note, in page nine, you'll see that this is just the amounts that we've spent on these capital projects. We spent a little over 156,000 in the election board renovation. Um, right buildings about a little over 88,000. Cemeteries a little over, a little under 78,000. And then the county match on the middle school stands at 688,000. For a total middle school expenditure of the day, a little over 2.7 million. As I've alluded, um, the county um, per, uh, borrowed, we closed the loan last week, last Tuesday, um, for um, a little over, right at $2 million to cover the county's portion, to spread our budget, the county's portion of um, the middle school project, but also to cover the cost of our capital projects. That's good fiscal sense. You want to, um, you want to, Take your long-term projects and finance those long-term to spread, to level out the budget so that we're not spiking up property taxes to cover these expenditures. And we got in right under the wire for when the Fed increased the interest rate. So I was like, yeah. I was so pleased that we were able to get that on. Any questions on the finance report? Okay, we've got our budget report for the um, month ending um, May. Um, we should have, um, at the end of May, we should have 8% in our budget, which is one month left. If you look across the page, you'll see that pretty much all of our departments are staying within budget. I do have a budget amendment for um, a couple of departments, but it's all grant driven, so it's good news. Um, we've got about 21% left in the budget, so we're standing pretty good. The, the, um, we've been frugal in our spending this year, and I'm, I'm glad for that. But we've also done a lot of really good things, too, so I'm, I'm pleased with how this year is closing out. I do have any questions on the budget. I think we're all about budget today. I don't know. Um, I do have some amendments um, to bring, uh, of which one we told the board. One, the, one amendment the board um, approved last Tuesday night, it related to DSS. I just need it ratified. Budget amendment number 22. I'll see your signatures to pick up $12,211 in crisis funds. In budget amendment number 23, we call the board so that I can make these distributions to the schools and the volunteer fire departments. We got an additional $10,202 in SRS money. I was so excited. So, as, as you know, 80% goes to the school system, and um, then we allocate the other 20 to our volunteer fire departments. So, they got a little extra shot in the arm. Um, and I think um, that will be handled in discussion items. And then I do have Budget amendment, budget amendment number 24. This is to pick up um, the additional funding that we have been um, allocated for transit um, out of the CARES Act for um, additions to salaries and benefits. Um, we also um, have some carryover money from COVID for the elections to cover, um, which we basically spend those down. Um, we are anticipating having some additional costs in elections for contracted services um, that the board's aware of, so I'm uh, budgeted for that. We've got an additional 26,550 in JCPC funds that will, uh, with zero county match, that will pass through to one of the organizations that's very vital to that program. And then, um, as I mentioned before, the sheriff and the jail have gotten several grants. This is to pick up two new grants. One is in the jail for NCDHHS COVID mitigation, um, for a little over 65000 And then the sheriff's department got a new grant, which they'll begin to spend um, this budget year that we're still in. It's the Internet.
crimes against children grant. So they're going to be getting a lot of really good equipment to, to um, do surveillance of people that are doing bad things to our children over the internet. That's 74,617. So we'll have a net increase to the budget for 2021-22 of 257,193 to pick up the conditional grant. All right, um, I will entertain a motion to approve budget number 22 for $12,211, uh, amendment number 23 for $10,202, and amendment number 24 for an increase of $257,193. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, All right. I think, is there any public comment over everything? Please. Please, that's all.
Messiah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to Olive. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next item, the releases, $2,683.40 and discoveries, $9.15. Next item we're going to we'll table. We may even talk a little bit of this about this in close. Uh, we did find uh, a, another area to take uh, our trash, a uh, very much lower rate at twenty dollars and fifty cents a ton. So a very good uh, option for now. We've got to make sure that's going to be a solid figure. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, or poll for budget amendment for ten thousand two hundred dollars and twelve cents. SRS. SR, SR, SR. for Juan Ledwell and Dequina Cable. Next item, no action needed, just the notice of holiday closing on July the 1st and July the 4th. And then the last item under discussion items is there are any new or old business? today about they're going to have somebody coming over here to do the walk, rock work so I'll get a little more engaged in that. Okay. Yeah. So they're, we're going to, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to do more to do. Yeah, they're going to, there's some rock work that never did get done. I had a volunteer and the volunteer just never did show back up from doing the stone work. So I'll, I'll get a little more involved in that. I'm wondering if we're going to have to run power out there and just like that cut out and for life. Potentially, yeah. I, I'll get, yeah, absolutely, I'll get more involved in it. Yes, you do. You want to accept the quote for the pool, 135 as stated by our manager, Marino. 
for I'm Campbell's in. Pool and Spa Incorporated. I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Second motion. All in favor? That's all we have. And I need you all to continue this meeting to June the 28th at 2 o'clock or a different time <laughs> if needed. Me and Cody. I'll find out. But two weeks. Okay. June 28th. That's a two, That's next Tuesday. That's so you can finalize all the budget amendments for year end so Becky can close the books. We should be about 20 minutes. <laughs> About three days of work. I'll entertain a motion to continue the meeting until June 28th. At 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock. Thank you. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's better for me. I'm usually up at 2. Motion. Okay, Second. thank you. Thank you. All in favor. <laughs> We've got a rally bunch on this. Some things they don't never change. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm glad. I'm so glad, glad I'm glad.